scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I want to stand upon the grace of our Father and Daddy, thank you again for this opportunity. I do not take it for granted. I am truly honored and truly grateful. I have the honor of speaking over our lives kings rule by their words the bible says where the word of a king is not the word of a man where the word of a king is psalms 82 and verse 5 says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. 7 says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. <clears throat> In the name that is above all names, I stand upon the grace of our Father and every servant of the living God here represented, and I declare, the same way the gates open for the King of glory to come in, every gate that has been closed over your life and destiny we speak to it now a father be open in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ gates of new dimensions gates of new seasons in the name of jesus the bible says in acts chapter 12 that Peter was bound hand and glove and eight soldiers were protecting him verse 5 says but prayer was made of the church unto God for him and an angel came and the Bible says when the angel tapped him the first gate opened the second gate opened listen he said he came to the iron gate that opens to the city there is a gate that controls influence if that gate is open, what you see in front of you is the city. I prophesy to you that everything that has buried your influence, may the one who can cut the bars of iron and break the gates open, may he swing open the gates for you. And then he says, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they sang. And the Bible says the people in the prison heard them. Suddenly there was an earthquake and a sound. And the Bible says, and all doors opened. They needed only one door. But when the king of glory came, all doors, so that others too can pass. I decree and declare, may that all door anointing open every closed door in your life. Hallelujah. All blessings come from God through men to men. It doesn't just come from God to men. Men have always been midwives. The Bible says the king sent for Joseph. It took the king sending for the prison to be opened. Whoever must send for you in the name that is above all names. May the father of spirits, the one who compels men to look for men, compel your helpers to send for you. In the name of Jesus Christ 
And on the third day, the Bible says that an angel came and rolled the stone and sat on it for the king of glory to come out. The kind of angelic assistance you need. By the privilege of the grace that comes through redemption, let angelic activities be dispatched for your sake. Are they not ministering spirits? Send today that be the heirs of salvation. Hallelujah. He said, our brother Lazarus sleepeth. Let us go and wake him. When they got to the tomb, he said, roll away the stone. It took a man to roll away the stone. There are some stones that men must roll away. Financial stones. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, all stones be rolled away. The Bible says, for as he is, so are we in this life. If he came out of the grave, then I prophesy upon you, like the bones in the valley of Ezekiel, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy as have been commanded, bones, find your bone, and be restored to an exceeding great army. Hallelujah. Please hear me. The Bible says, when Lot, judgment was about to be declared over Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot was with his daughters there. Are we together? When the angels came, the men came and wanted to sodomize the angels. And Lot even offered, he said, take my daughters. And the people refused. And the angels struck them with blindness. My Bible says they wearied themselves at the door. You can be close to the door, but if your eyes are not open, that you are close to the door, but it will still not open. The miracle of open eyes. The Bible says, then open he their understanding, that they might understand scripture. In the name of Jesus, may the King of glory open your understanding. Access to light. Paul was praying over the church in Ephesus. Chapter 1 from verse 16. He says, I bow my knees to the Father of our glory, of glory, that he may grant unto you wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Knowledge is not revelation. It is knowledge and understanding that becomes revelation. You can have knowledge and awareness and yet not have revelation. The eyes of your understanding, he says, being flooded with light that ye may know. For these 40 years, every door God has opened for our Father, we stand by the privilege of connection and by the privilege of the altar here, I decree standing on His grace, every door that did not close for Him, it will not close for you. Every door that opened for Him across the nations, may it be opened for you. Hallelujah. For these 40 years, death could not come to him therefore i declare by the power that raised christ from the dead every covenant with death job said he will deliver you in six things here is seven things one of it is the scourging tongues of men if there is any tongue speaking against you to bring you to the grave i declare be escaped like the bird before the fowler hallelujah Now, please listen, everyone. I've been given the permission to do this, and I just want to do this. Just help those under the anointing. When Cornelius, please listen carefully. When Cornelius, the Bible called him a centurion, and he said he was a devout man who feared God. I hope you know that the salvation of the Gentiles started in Acts chapter 10 and it came through the wings of a man who understood two things. Heaven commended that the basis for that visitation was based on number one, the strength of his prayer and number two, the strength of his giving. As, as powerful 
as God's redemption plan is, it rode upon the wings of a supposed ordinary man. You would think the salvation of the Gentiles should happen through a mighty apostle and a prophet, but it came to a military man only because he satisfied two conditions, the health of his priesthood and his benevolence towards blessing men. If he could bless men, then he could be a worthy tool even for the kingdom. Now, please hear me. When it has to do with the subject of giving, I submit to you, shamefully but truthfully, that many people have been wrongly manipulated within the body of Christ, and sometimes it's even an ugly concept when we talk about it. it it's very ugly because people have merchandised the gospel sadly. We know God is purging and helping his church. Are we together? However, I will tell you this. The Bible says a son honored his father. And one of the principles of honor is giving with understanding. For if giving is by manipulation, there is no reward. Are we together? The Bible says, he that sows sparingly, he shall reap sparingly. He that shows bountifully will reap bountifully. Then it says, every man, according as he has proposed in his heart, so let him give. Cheerfully and not grudgingly, for God loves a cheerful giver. The next verse says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, so that ye, having sufficiency in all things, that you will abound in every good work. I can tell you this. There are mysterious principles that lift men in this kingdom. Among them is connecting to prophetic patriarchal blessings through giving with understanding. 40 years is a very prophetic number because it means the end of a season of training. The end, 40 years gives way to 10 more years that declares jubilee. At the end of 40 years, a man is now authorized to enter his season of appearing. It's a prophetic number. Are we together? And I want to challenge us to give, beginning from myself. I will not preach what I don't believe. I will not preach what I don't understand. I will not preach what I don't agree with. I have preached and we have spoken about the King of Glory. The entire plan of redemption was given that God carried his son as a seed and sowed him to the earth and as a result he's today received many sons into glory I want to challenge you I've already agreed with God even before I came here I will tell you the truth I fear God I will stand before God I will not be a party to anything that does not glorify Jesus Christ but I want to challenge us to give and this giving is twofold number one to honor this work and to honor these 40 years, to tap into this grace that God has so lavishly granted our father and our mother. But number two, I want to challenge you. We are sowing into the anointing of our father. It is not compulsory. It is by revelation. But I can tell you this is the mystery behind the rising of many people. I know that this principle works if done with understanding. I'm not going to give you any amount. I may not have the liberty to do that and I apologize, but I'm going to challenge you. I already have my seed for the convention, not to announce for pride my apologies, but just to challenge our hearts and my seed for our father. I would never come to see our father and not hold a seed. The reason why it does not work for us men of God is that we tell people to do it, but we don't do it. That is the truth. The same Lord is rich unto all. Anyone who does this in truth and with understanding, I know the things that have changed in my life. Once upon a time, some of you may have heard my stories. When I met two women, daddy, and I was going to buy sugar cane, and the women were standing there like her mommy, and I pleaded, I said, I will, I will pay for you just to honor them, not looking for anything. And one of those mama looked at me. They were blessing and I, I didn't really pay attention. But she looked at me with audacity and said, My son, forever walk upon gold. This was what she spoke to my life. It was in a city, midwife in Quara State and Ekiti State. I returned from preaching many years ago in Afebabalola University. On my way returning to Quara to take a flight, 
down, you know, to Abuja and then return back home. I decided to stop in a small village there where I saw that people live mysteriously long. I saw the obituary, 100 and something. Every time you see repetition of patterns, there is a grace supporting it there. Are we together? The Bible says, for this purpose, many are weak, sick, and do sleep. What is the sin? Not discerning the body. There are spiritual investments that reside within the body that through honor and discernment, you can tap into it. I was a man of God, but I had to throw that away. When I stopped, I couldn't speak Yoruba, so I pleaded that they should look for someone. I said, who is the oldest man now in this city? My apologies that I'm, I'm taking some time, sir. My sincere apologies. But I just want to charge our hearts so that we can receive. I stopped there and I saw a man, 136 years, he had just died. I couldn't believe it. In Nigeria, I know the kind of call God has for me. The kind of my call is close to death perpetually. So when I find an anointing for longevity, I tap into it with wisdom. Are we together? I've been in the midst of many crises right from the time in Zaria and the north, even before the Lord brought me. I know what it means to be close to the gates of death. I know men are preserved by the wisdom they have. Are we together? And I carried a seed and I saw some women there and we finally got a, a man who was speaking limited English and I said, please, they should take us to anybody who is the oldest there. We entered a room and there was a man, I think he was maybe probably a senior apostle, he looked like a man of God. And I was talking and they would interpret. And we said, Baba, we are men of God and I just want to come and honor you and to have you bless us. He sat on his chair and laughed and said, kneel down. See, those who have this thing know they have it. This is a true story. I got down on my knees with my seed and he began to speak in Yoruba. I didn't hear one thing he said, but I felt like a crown was being put upon my head. Once that was done, I got up, sowed the seed and blessed him. Going to go and enter the car, I saw the women that were standing and I said, let me go and appreciate them. And they now told me this 136 year old man who died, that was his wife standing. No glasses, no stick, no nothing. The wife of his youth. I went back. I said, Madam, he may have died, but the Bible says two shall become one. So he's still alive in you. Pray for me again. This is a true story. If I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. The woman tapped me and said, follow me. I walked with her and we entered a room, daddy. And when we entered that room, she started showing us pictures. She was the wife of his youth. And you know they married very early. That woman remained with him like that till the final days. And I said, Mama, please, can you pray for us? She took off her shoes and said, kneel down. She stood on barefoot on the ground. And for the next 15 minutes, she was praying. I can tell you, I am a product of many anointings. And it did not just come through prayer. That's the point I'm trying to show you. Some came through prayer. Some came through prophetic seed connection with understanding. Forget about the abuses here and there and some of the mistakes people have made. I want to challenge someone right now. May I please request if we can display the ministry account number? I don't know how we are going. Okay, beautiful. I don't know how we are going to do it for those who have a prophetic seed, particularly for our father and our mother, may I please encourage you by the message of God. You may want to label it. You may want to get the account details. I don't know how the officials will coordinate it. But I'm going to pray. May I encourage everyone to sow something. I want to pray right now. A transfer, you can make whatever it is. Whether it is now or later, just a word. I have the permission to do this and I just want to do this and then we we'll step down. It's an honor for us to do this, to do it with understanding. Hallelujah. Those who are following online, you love our Father in the Lord, Bishop Wale Oke, and his dear wife. You believe in what is happening here and you are tapping into that grace, sowing into his life and sowing into the vision and the conference. We're about to pray. Hallelujah. I'm standing in faith by the privilege of God's grace alongside every great man of God here, fathers of faith here represented, and together as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
those who have been privileged to be partakers of the grace upon our Father, we want to pray. Hallelujah. You can use the account details. You have your seed there. You can sow. I may not necessarily ask you to come out, but I want to challenge you to really, really sow from the depth of your heart. Your church can sow. Your business can sow. As an individual, you can sow. But make sure you do it with understanding and revelation. It is not the activity that produces results. It is the understanding and the purity of heart that supports what you are doing. Let's pray. Father, again we stand upon the grace that you have so lavishly invested upon our father and our mother and upon this great vision. Lord, I stand in partnership with every man and woman of God in this place, veterans of the gospel. And Lord, together as a united family, we thank you for the gift of our father, Daddy Wale Uke and our mother. We thank you in the name of Jesus for this great vision, 40 years of exploits even by the Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have challenged your people to sow, to honor our parents, to sow, to honor the work. Therefore, Lord, I stand by the privilege of this call and by the privilege of this grace. I declare for everyone who has given, is giving and will give. May the God of heaven who answers by the name Jaira, may he visit you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy to you like the prophet said over Samaria, for some of you by this time tomorrow, in the name that is above all names, may the Lord turn your captivity and give you joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Like Elijah spoke to the woman in Shunem, I speak to you, your bread will not be spent. In the name of Jesus Christ. When men say there is a casting down for you, let it be that there is a lifting up. Paul explaining the mystery of the seed said God is able to give your seed another body. You are sowing money, reap favor. You are sowing money, reap wisdom. You are sowing money, reap restoration. May God give your seed another body. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The level at which you have given, you will never go below it. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you, for every soul that is won through your seed, for every life that is mentored and transformed, for every activity that makes for kingdom advance, that is sponsored by your seed, may it rise as a memorial for you in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord bless you as you sow and increase you in the name of Jesus. Daddy, thank you again. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a big hand. Please give the Lord a big, big hand. Please give the Lord a big hand. Give him a big hand. Pastor Yomi, let there be music. Uh, let's give everybody now. Now listen to this. I didn't plan to step on this altar today. If you watch it in the morning after the graduation, I didn't step in, but the, the water is stirred. And um, it's a very, very prophetic moment. The man who's bringing the next word is in the house. I recognize Pastor Oju Uyemade. Please give him a big hand. I recognize him. But I want the very, very important activity of giving to be concluded. It's the ordinary giving. Your seed is very precious. The offerings of God's people are secret. So, Yomi, give us music. Let's sing. Don't go yet, son. Give us music. Give your offering properly from your heart with understanding to the Lord, then we'll do something. 
Praise the Lord. You're me, are you there? Come on now. Thank you. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. convention the Lord particularly spoke to me it is going to be a generational shift convention it's going to be a generational shift forty represents a generation in the scripture so we took it seriously to really pray to at least seek the face of the Lord. And he spoke. He said many things about that. And as I sat down there listening to my son preach, joy bubbled within me. The future of the church in Nigeria is glorious. <laughs> Listen to this. Oko Aram is no problem. Let me hear your amen. Yeah. 
Banditry is no problem. Yeah. Let me hear your amen. Yeah. Or the kidnapping, no problem. Yeah. They, are, they are happening, they are real. But church, be careful. Let's not enter into their territory. Let's not reply with hate and bitterness. That's not our domain. We're in the domain of love. They're in the domain of hate. If you cross over from our domain to their domain, we will lose. Because that is not our native territory. We're not fitted for it. We cross over into a domain of hate, bitterness. My friend, we are like fish out of water. But we stay in the domain of love. And we unleash the ability of the king of glory. What's Boko Haram? Recently I was praying and thinking about this. The rate at which Muslims were getting born again in the 70s, in the 80s, was serious. But since people began to respond in hate, something is happening to that. We must go back to our domain. Let's go back. That apart. A few years ago, I think about 12 years or so, there are witnesses here. An outstanding man of God, Professor Peter Wagner, traveled down to Nigeria shortly before he died and called a meeting of apostolic leadership in Nigeria. We held this meeting, my friends, George Covenant, sorry, office, Bishop David Dutipur in Ota. <clears throat> All the apostolic fathers, the Pentecostals were there. Pastor Yeh Deboe, Dr. Omar Pai, uh, Bishop Michael Konko, we were there. And Peter Wagner, professor of church growth, he says certain things. He said, I'm a professor of church growth. I studied the move of God all across the world together with my team. He said, there is no nation on earth where the move of God is so strongly felt like it is in Nigeria. He said, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, you will clap. To, I'm, I'm saying something. I'm going somewhere. He said, we studied it. Bishop Bakri, you were in that meeting. He said, no nation on earth. He said, we studied everything. He said, but God woke me up in the night. I said, go and tell the apostolic leaders of the church in Nigeria that they must not allow what happened to the revival in Korea to happen to them. That Korea used to have the revival fire glowing all over the world. Everybody wants to go to Korea. But now it has become a heap of ashes. And if the apostolic leaders in Nigeria are not warned. What happened to Korea will happen again in Nigeria. Go on them. That was his last trip to Nigeria before he died. Oh, we were all in tears. Everybody. 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 everybody we we're just praying and praying and praying, asking God to help us. And then they all spoke that the church in Korea went through that disaster because there was a disconnect between the fathers who received the unction, the anointing, and the mantle for revival and the next generation. They didn't carry the next generation along. And the revival died. Now, I've shared this in a couple of places. Uh, Pastor Pojo, please, permit me. You trust the prophetic grace of my life. You have your time today. But please kindly come up. Please come. Come. Let's Let's clap for give me. Give, give me. Can I have another microphone? Don't go, don't go, don't go. Music, don't go. Give me the minstrel. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. It's a prophetic moment. 
you know, it's a prophetic moment. He was telling me something. I, just, I went to preach for him at his annual pastor's conference a few days ago. And there was a gentleman from Singapore who told him something about what I just told you now with statistics. I want you to share. This is very, very serious. And what is happening here today, this man represents a new generation, a generation. This You know, we have we've had Baba Adiboy great things God are doing with him and his peers. Pastor Kumi and Ko. my friend David Reko is going to be here tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, he was with me forty years ago, brother David, when we had the first Holy Ghost Convention. He will tell you with his mouth tomorrow. You, you've, you have something. You have, how many of you had Baba Adiboy yesterday that your generation will be greater than his own generation? <laughs> how many of you had it? <laughs> and listen to me. If you are talking of anybody in the body, in the body of Christ globally, outstandingly great, Adiboy is one. It took a church struggling, classical Pentecostal church, 32 small parishes. And now they are in 200 nations of the world. In Nigeria alone, there are over 38,000 parishes. If you're talking of greatness, that's it. But when he said, as a generation that will be greater than his, that's very, very prophetic. Because God takes his people from glory to glory. You will see greater glory. Some people are hearing me now. You will be greater than Adeboye. You will be greater than Adeboye. And, but listen, I, I want pastor to tell us in yeah, summary what that man said. He, he just told me there now. And you see the significance of what you want to do now. Please, over to you, Pastor Coaches. Yes. Well, what he said was that in 1955, in South Korea, the population was 4% Christians. It was a Buddhist country. By 1985, which was 30 years after, because of the revival, the Christian population was now 34%, and it was on the rise. By 2015, that Christian population had diminished to 22%. But the significant thing is that among the young generation, only less than 3% profess Christianity. So the next generation... They are back to, to Buddhism. To Buddhism. To Buddhism. Now, son, we're going to pray for you. I'm going to invite some people. Um, I have some key officials of PFN here today. By the grace of God, when Baba spoke to you yesterday, and he referred to me as his commander-in-chief, that's how he called me. When I became national president of PFA, Baba looked at me. He said, son, you are my commander in chief now. He said, as far as I am concerned, and the entire redeemed Christian church of God, it is what to say that we will do. And Baba doesn't play with words. I felt like crawling under the ground. And since that time, he has stood solidly. Every instruction we give, Baba will just, you know, he said, he told us, he has shown us how to lead. Now he will demonstrate how to follow. That, that's something. Alright? Now, I'm representing over 65 million Pentecostals. I will invite some of our officials. I have one of our directors here, Pastor Femi Emmanuel, please join me on the other. 
Bishop David Bakari, please join me on the altar. Bishop, Prophet Adela Walker. Prophet, where are you? Prophet Adela Walker. Wave your hand wherever you are. Prophet Adela Walker. Adela Walker. Also, Osho. Okay, please join me here. There's, there's an elder statesman here who saw the old revival. You know, Dr. Likon Abatunde, please come join us here. Come, come. Dr. Likon Abatunde, please join us here. Join us here. I'm going to invite uh, Pastor Koju because uh, you are the link. You are the link. You are the link. The link between our generation and his generation, and we want to unleash this generation to the world. And listen to this. Once we, we connected, we did a meeting PFM from glory to glory. That was prophetic. Psalm 145, verse 4. Psalm 145 verse 4 One generation shall praise thy works to another. The revival that God has graciously given us in Nigeria shall never die. 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 It will go from generation to generation. And it will engulf the world. In the mighty name of Jesus. On this man, please surround this man of God. Everybody stretch your hands. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Just pray. Pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray loudly. 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 Mapatokorikelebokodiketoria Orama kabo kode keta, baribo kode keto keto, borabo kode keto borabo kode, pupi pe keto kote kere ya, baribo kode kete kya, pai da mo, pai de mo, kau le mo, she kere mo koba kabo, tera ba kaba, mama rebo. In Jesus. Mighty name, we pray by apostolic authority. We unleash you and your generation to the world. If Elisha carried the double portion of the grace and glory on Elijah, we command. The multiple portion of the anointing that God has placed upon the fathers in Nigeria to fall upon you and your generations. Go with might. Go with grace. Go with strength. Nations will bow before you. The enemies of Zion shall be crushed under your feet. You and your generation, you will ignite global revival. Global revival. Global revival. Global revival. Global revival. As we pray for you, we ask for that mantle of grace, glory, and power for end time revival to fall upon people.
people of your generation whether they be here or they are watching from their homes or wherever they are in the world receive the mantle you carry the fire carry the fire we speak over your life Joshua Selman you will not fall you will not stumble you will be guarded with the strength of El Shaddai the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle he will hold your hand beyond your capacity or wisdom or ability shall be the great experts you will do nations will bow before you nations will bow before you you'll be a major instrument of revival globally 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 great doors are open to you go with grace go with strength go with might it is established irreversibly in jesus mighty name we pray amen somebody give the lord a shot give the lord a shot give him a shot Friends, yes, Thursday morning. Thursday morning is going to be great. We are not everybody. Everybody. Thursday morning. So when you're coming Thursday morning, make sure you bring a bottle of anointing oil and a clean weather handkerchief. Thursday evening, we shift to the stadium. <laughs> Who was a co worker and co companion with Raya Bonke? for over 30 years also a german like rabonke evangelist ekehard is here and we are packing the stadium thursday at the masimba stadium thursday friday go tell everybody and we are packaged 40,000 bags of rice. You, you had me well. Each one, 5 kg. I was in the presence of God in the night praying for this convention. And the Lord told me, I was asking the Lord for something special for the Holy Ghost convention. Many things I prayed. And he told me, I asked him, what are you going to give to me? And he said, feed the poor. The people who can give you tight. Who can give you offering. Who can pay you back. Feed them. And watch what I will do. <laughs> and then I was followed by a revelation of glory. In the night, 
I was so, so excited. So I called all my children. I said, give me, I said, we are doing 40 Holy Ghost Convention. Give me 40 bags of rice. You, give me 40 bags of rice. And they were sending. I said, you, somebody said, you're asking for 40, daddy, I'm sending 50. Give me 40 bags. You can still send. You can still send. And Thursday and Friday, everyone that come, we go with, there's a lot of hunger in the land. And what we're doing is symbolic. So we're packing the stadium. Those of you that have a concern, are we going to be able to use the stadium? It's done. Don't worry. I, ca I called my son today and said, stadium. He said, daddy, no, no problem. I won't say much more than that. So Thursday evening, Friday evening, we pack the stadium. Now, men and brethren, in the morning, oh boy. I've listened to Pastor Koju a couple of times, but I've never had him like I had him this morning. Uh, it was, it was something else, something else. I celebrate the grace of God upon your life, sir. I honor you, and I give glory to God. Please give Pastor Koju a big hand. Thank you for the. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.